He is going to go through a clear slot. He got it. Touchdown. <laughs> Welcome in. Now about them, Cowboys. This is episode number 17, and we're talking some pre-training camp storylines with my guy, Kyle Yeomans of DallasCowboys.com. Kyle, how are we doing today, my guy? Doing great. I mean, we're getting ready for training camp. I mean, the countdown is on. I mean, we are are less than a week away from touchdown in Oxnard, actually about a week week from this point that we're recording this i mean they're going to be on the practice field i mean that's exciting stuff to, that we're going to get to see the cowboys out there and, and get back to work but uh everything's good in, in this neighborhood as we get ready for football man I, I had a talk with my son a week or two ago and he's like dad you know it's been kind of boring there's no news for the dallas cowboys and i mentioned this last week on the show but i told him that's great <laughs> that is yeah. absolutely this time <laughs> of year when there's no news and, and and we're starting to there's there's news sprinkling in over the last day or two, yeah. but nothing significant, nothing that I think is groundbreaking or going to change the trajectory of this squad. But in the past, there's been summers where we've just been like I've been woken up and slapped in the face by terrible news. So I'm going to knock on wood right right back here. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I'm feeling pretty good about it, man. But we are happy to have you on. And, and it's happy like yeah. Been about a year since, well, I think we've had you on a few times since then, but last year, one of the coolest things we did on this show was when you were live in training camp and you mm-hmm. there, like you were sitting on the field and, and that was awesome. When do you head out to Oxnard this year? So we head out on Monday. That's when we touch down in, in LA and we, we make the, the trek out to, to Oxnard from LAX. And uh, we really, we'll, we'll get to talk to a couple players that day, but mostly that's just move in day. I mean, you, you get all the bags and you kind of get set up and, and your rooms and you get, get to see your roommates and kinda, you make your initial trip to the store and, and get your stuff. So uh, that'll be a whole lot of fun. And then after that, I mean, the Tuesday is, is really kind of just to get your feet wet, get the, the meeting started day. Cause we'll have meetings as a department, they'll have the opening press conference. So there'll be a lot of media uh, going on through through Oxnard that day, and then Wednesday they get on the field. The J- July twenty sixth, it's it's time to get going at that point. So yeah, we'll we'll have to do that again. I'll have to we'll have to hop back on about halfway or maybe three three fourths of the way through camp, and then I'll give you a, a nice little update of how things are looking out there. I'm excited for the weather. I mean, right now in Dallas, I mean, I'm looking outside. I'll tell. I mean, I'll show you around here too. We're I'm at the Star, so. Oh, yeah. I've, I've got like the front parking lot of the star here and I can feel the heat off of these right. windows. It's absolutely blistering. La- yesterday was a high of 108 and they're thinking it could possibly hit that again today. So when we get out there and it's going to be 75 to 80, I am not going to complain even a single bit. I'm going to be excited the whole way and we get football. So it's all great. Man, 108 degrees. Damn, it is like 85 degrees up here. And I got I run a heating and air conditioning business. I told you that in, in the yep. beginning of the show. And uh, customers are screaming. Like, hey, 108, man. I can't imagine yeah. being a business. And must be booming out there yeah, for anybody doing that. It, it, that's the thing is it's also – it's a, it's a human 108. It, like, you walk outside and it's almost like getting – into a hair dryer like that's what it feels like is like you're you're it, you're walking in a hair dryer is is what ends up happening so yeah i'm i'm excited for the fresh coast air coming from from oxnard and, and getting to watch some football practice and maybe a little sunburn get a little tan it'll work out it'll be great yeah man excellent it's gonna, is it gonna be weird this year going out there and zeke not being there because i mean des bryant you know cole beasley like you know those guys obviously they're not in the same category of, of caliber of player but you know i know they would go out to oxnard playing basketball you had the big personalities and then mm-hmm. zeke kind of took the reins i think as as a big personality for the team and now he's gone 
who do you like is it going to be weird and who do you think's kind of stepping up into that role of you know the team yeah. mascot in a sense I think it will be weird because I mean he's been such a fixture at in Oxnard and he's he was such that's the thing about about Zeke is that no matter what he did on the practice field he was always going to have time to to make a joke or two he was such a jokester and he would he would keep everybody light and loose and uh, he he'd interact with fans he would sign a ton of autographs like he was always just really he he kind of got it like he understood it so yeah it'll be it'll be interesting I think it's going to end up being better for both sides. Uh, I think he needed a change of scenery, and I think the Cowboys needed to to get rid of that contract. And so, uh, overall, and and also it gives opportunities for some of these other guys that are that are in the running back room that I, that they're really excited about that I'm really excited about. So I think it it ultimately will work out for both sides. But it is it's going to be weird going out there and seeing. We'll see a 21 on the field, but he'll play he'll be playing court, corner, and then it'll yeah. say more on the back and so that'll right. be that'll be odd to see uh when we get out there man and things like times are changing you know we had the huge personality in des we had the huge personality in zeke and we're kind of becoming a defensive squad yeah and it's you now know now you see yeah it's it, cd's like a quiet he's elite mm -hmm. he's, but he's he's like a quiet i'll show you right yeah. and that's and obviously i'm not as close to the players as you are but that's the vibe i get from watching at home Dak sure. is, you know, rah, rah when it needs to be, but no more than that, you know, and, and then the offensive line, Tyler, Zach, Tyron, Terrence, you know, and, and even Pollard, Pollard doesn't really seem to bark too much. So it's like we yeah. went from a decade and a half of major offensive personalities. And now it's going to, it seems like the defense might be the, the most loud and, uh, and rah, rah bunch uh, coming up in training camp. Well, and that, I think it, it plays into, the success that that both of those units have had. I mean, the defensive unit has been the more successful unit. And usually whenever you're winning games because of your defense, I mean, the defense is going to talk. And, right. and I, I think that's where the personality shines. I mean, I think Diggs is a, a quieter leader on that defense, quieter right. than, than most would, would anticipate. I think Gilmore probably fits that mold too. But when he gets on the field, I mean, they both – they talk a lot. Uh, they talk to those guys. I mean, and that's where – I think you're able to show that personality whenever Micah and D law are getting after the quarterback and Dak doesn't have time to throw in practice. I mean, I think that's where you're going to see a lot of that, uh, that, that personality shine. So I, I think it goes with the territory of being the dominant unit so far and, and having this defense be really as talented as they are. But if you think that offense doesn't have uh, a considerable amount of swagger, especially now with Brandon cooks in the fold, Right. I think you'd be mistaken. That's going to be a fun offensive unit to watch. And I think a lot of room to grow, too, with the way that, that things are starting to shape out on that side. Right. And it also seemed like Donovan Wilson was starting to kind of take upon a role of kind of the enforcer of the defensive yeah. unit as we First got to the mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm excited to see all that, man. I love defense wins championships. I love being able to cheer for a team like when the Cowboys were struggling. Like I always enjoyed watching the Ravens like the early 2000s because I love the way they played. Now, you know, my team plays tenacious and, and tough and rowdy and, and I love it. But uh, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. All right. We're going to start with some recent news. All right. So Zach Martin, I guess he he was out of OTAs for like a minor muscle tissue injury but now it seems like maybe he was holding out. He seems a little unhappy about his contract. So can you summarize that a little bit for us and the listener? Yeah, I, I think for the most part, there's there's the rumors that are out there and what has been reported. Adam Schefter had it first on, on Wednesday morning about how Zach Martin is a little unhappy about his, his contract situation. And there's not any numbers on there. I mean, his, his deal at the moment is a team-friendly deal. It has been. Zach's kind of been the – the go-to guy for a uh, for a restructure and for allowing the, the Cowboys to kind of fluctuate that cap hit a little bit this year. I mean, his base salary is 1.7, but don't think that's what he's getting. I mean, he's going to end up getting about 11 million because they restructured 9.3 million of that into a signing bonus. So uh, it, it ends up being about 11 million to 13 million, depending on on some of the the incentives there as well. So. He's, he's due a, a significant contract, but he thinks that, uh, or at least the reports are, 
that he he should be due more money to match the market of guard play and and match some of those offensive linemen and what they do. So uh, th- certainly the numbers show that that he is a well paid guard, but is he the best paid guard? No, and is he the best guard in football? There's an argument for for that, and so he wants to be played like like he's the best guard in football. Also, not to mention, I mean, the guy to his right, Terrence Steele, uh, when he's back and healthy, there's a possibility he's going to get a new deal as well. So maybe this is to get ahead of that. Um, the Cowboys have some cap space. I mean, they have about $20 million to play around with now that they've signed all of the – they continue to sign some of these rookies and kind of get get that taken care of. But uh, they have some money to play with. If they are going to do so, it may have to be a uh, – uh, another one of those let's let's give you an extra year or two maybe we can give you some more time off in terms of training camp and let that that happen but for the most part I don't think Zach Martin is in any danger of m- missing games he would more so just miss practice uh if if the contract situation would be about the same all right yes yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a a terrible thing no. if he misses some practice time, but you know, I'd like to see if anything. Let's together. let's bubble wrap the guy and get him to week yeah. one. Let's make sure yeah. he's he's healthy and, and ready to go. Him and Tyron, yeah, you know, honestly, Tyron, yeah. go 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 hang out with Zach, go do whatever he's doing, go play some mini golf or whatever. Yeah, now, uh, so speaking of contracts, you know, Diggs, Parsons, Lamb. You know, I know Diggs and Lamb are, are before Parsons, but Parsons is kind of, you know, down the pipe. Do you yeah. feel there is any contract work going to be done when the Cowboys arrive at training camp? Yeah, I, I do. I, I really think there will be some done. And I, I think Zach Martin, now that it's kind of public news, that might be one of the first ones that 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 comes to, to value. I mean, I was looking at it too. I was just curious myself, but he's the Zach Martin is the fourth highest paid right guard in football right now. I behind Wyatt Teller, Brandon Scherf and Chris Lindstrom, who just got a new deal this off season. So it, there's, there's a little bit of a ways to go for him to, to kind of bump up. He's at 14 million a year average uh, on that deal. And, and Lindstrom's new deal was 20.5. So he wants to be up there in the 20 million range, probably if that's the case. So, that might be one of the first ones to get done just because it's a uh, an immediate need and it's it's on the forefront of everybody's mind. Uh, I think C.D. Lamb probably gets a deal at some point. And, and I don't know that. I haven't heard that. This isn't reporting anything new. This is just a, a, an opinion on looking from the outside about how uh, some of those contract situations work. Because even if we're in the building, it doesn't mean that we're going to have right. the inside scoop on how these contracts are, are right. going to get worked out. So. But I think I think CD, you can at least calculate his value. Trayvon and Micah, it's harder to, to calculate their value. And, and what I mean by that is they're both phenomenal players. They're both fantastic and they're both at the top of their position. But do you sign Trayvon Diggs as a ball hawking corner, which he has absolutely shown that he can be? Uh, he did so in 2021. Or do you sign him as a lockdown corner, somebody who was better in coverage, who was better in terms of allowing receptions in 2022? He had two very different seasons uh, from 11 interceptions, but a a bajillion yards. And then you turn around and he's got uh, limited receptions, but he also has limited interceptions, mostly because teams don't want to throw his direction. Uh, that's that's where you kind of have maybe a disconnect just from the negotiation table standpoint. We all know Trayvon Diggs is cornerback one. We all know that he's a great player. But from a a negotiation standpoint, it might be harder to try and come to a meeting point. Whereas CeeDee Lamb is is very easy in that regard. He's the number one wide receiver. He's going to get paid like the number one wide receiver on your football team. So uh, I think there, there is an opportunity for him to get done. I'm a little shocked that Pollard didn't get done. I thought there was incentive on both sides uh, to to get a, a deal taken care of there because there just was there was so much uh, on on the line for both team both sides. I mean, the Cowboys wanted to lower the cap hit, and Tony Pollard signed that that franchise tag early on, um, it, but he wants more years. So that's where I think there was a disconnect, and I'm a, I was a little shocked to even hear that. There wasn't a whole lot of conversation being had. So uh, definitely interesting there. I think those are both possibilities. I don't think Micah gets done this year. I think that if they're smart, they would do it. Uh, if they really want to get ahead of it, they would. 
but his team is smart enough too to say, hey, we're going to let his value continue to rise. We're going right. to see what he can continue to do from a defensive standpoint because if they sign him to a deal this offseason, he goes out and wins defensive player of the year, uh, all of a sudden that deal is not going to be relevant anymore. So right. um, I think his his party is probably A-OK waiting this one out. Uh, the team isn't in a super huge hurry either. They have the fifth-year option that I'm sure they'll pick up next summer on him. Um, just to make sure that he's good to go. But for the most part, I think CD is probably the most likely, probably followed by Trayvon and, and and maybe even Zach Martin in there too if they want to restructure his deal. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with them waiting on Trayvon too. Like waiting a year, you know, the price might go up. Possibly. But- you know, but I, I like I like having Gilmore, who's won a defensive player of the year, who's won a Super Bowl. I like having him in the same locker room as Trayvon Diggs, because I'm I'm somebody who believes like, you know, if you want to get what somebody's gotten, you got to do what they've done. And you have a guy in the locker room that can show you what it takes to accomplish those things. And I want to see if learning from a guy like Stefan Gilmore helps him elevate his game. And yes, it might cost more to if he does elevate his game but and then on the other hand if he doesn't you know maybe you franchise him maybe you know you negotiate but cd lamb has to be done parsons has to be done and you know zach martin has to be done but i want to move on to you, you mentioned uh tony pollard now tony pollard no contract but he signed his franchise tag we got mm-hmm. in division we got saquon barkley who he's going to hold out he's mm-hmm. you know they don't even know how long he's going to hold out to and then we have you know the, the raiders in Vegas, Josh Jacobs didn't did sign his tag. So what do you think it means to the Dallas Cowboys that Tony Pollard did sign? He is going to show up as far as we know. And what do you think it means for the Giants that one of their best players, you know, is is disgruntled with the organization? Ooh, I mean, it is tough. I mean, it, I feel like the, there's a lot of disconnect between really just – those who support running backs and those who support the, the, the team building aspect. I mean, there's two different sides to this uh, because the fact of the matter is the running back position has been devalued over the last few seasons, whether that's right or wrong. I mean, that's just kind of how the, the game has gone. Can you still win without a running back? Yes. I mean, you can win without a, a high level, highly paid running back. I mean, we've seen it the last couple of years, teams that, have have invested in the position, but mostly with draft capital having success in doing so rather than investing with with the the big contracts. So uh, I, I do feel bad for those guys, but that's just kind of how how the the NFL works at it. Would I love to have a high level running back like a Saquon Barkley on my football team? Absolutely. Who would? I mean, he is such a dude that you kind of need that to happen. Um, but. I think what it says about both of those guys is that Saquon Barkley knows his value. He knows that the franchise tag probably isn't what uh, ultimately is going to be best for his career. So he's going to stay put and he's going to end up um, he's going to end up putting his foot in the ground and, and kind of saying, hey, listen, I want I want my deal. I want it now. Josh Jacobs, same same sort of deal. Tony Pollard, I think him signing his deal is mostly a bet made on himself. Um, I think coming off of the injury, uh, he wasn't certain that there was going to be a long-term deal done. So what's the best way to, to ensure having that money in your pocket is, is signing the franchise tag. If the team is going to place it on you, take that money and then try and find a deal later on. And it, it didn't really seem like there was a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of talks after that either. So I think it's a, it's a bet on himself sort of year now with Pollard and, and seeing him kind of take that next step as, as a running back one. If he can continue to do so, he'll continue to make some money uh, at the running back position. But he's got to show that he's coming off of that injury healthy and that he's going to be a a key contributor in this offense this season. So I don't think it says a ton about like them as a person or them as a as a, a, a professional. I think more so it's just the situations that are at hand. Pollard, if he would have been completely healthy, he may have tried to hold this one out a little right. bit longer as well. But he knew like, going into it that, hey, he's going to have to kind of prove it himself. But why why not prove it whenever it's $10.9 million yeah. in, instead of something else along the lines? Heck, yeah. I love it. Now, I know I think we played the Giants week one, yep. right? So if, if Saquon wants to sit out, that's fine with me. And neither the Giants nor the Cowboys really have an excellent situation at backup running back, right? Malik yep. Davis didn't see much time last year. We got Ronald Jones, who 
coming out of USC, highly sought after, but kind of never really established himself in the NFL. New York Giants draft Eric Ray out of Oklahoma, former Tennessee yeah. volunteer. You know, so there's a lot of question marks behind these two top running backs. So it'll be interesting to see. But Daniel Jones, you know, after getting paid, helped him to have Saquon in the backfield. I know they brought in Darren Waller. I know they drafted Jalen Hyatt. But there's a lot of question marks over there, and the burden will be very heavy on this guy. It's, it, I like to think of investing in your investments, right? And people like, yeah. it, and, and that's a very practical statement. You know, you invested in Daniel Jones, you invest in him. Like, that's why when the Cowboys drafted Zeke, you know, to play behind Tony Romo and to play behind that offensive line, everyone said, well, you know, you don't need a star running back. Well, wait, we're investing in our investments. We put mm -hmm. all our money in this offensive line, in this quarterback. Yep. So, you know, you, you go ahead, you you lock up Daniel Jones, you bring in Darren Waller. You know, you, you better put that, that, that shiny new toy, you know, in, in the garage, that Ferrari. Um, yep. All right, so Dak Prescott recently – Talked about, you know, so I've been seeing pictures of the Dak yard. Absolutely phenomenal. And one of my favorite things from seeing that is Jalen Tolbert's there. And Jalen yeah. Tolbert looks good. And if you bump into Jalen Tolbert, you need to tell him, I talked to Coach. He met you at the Senior Bowl, and he's the guy who got you in. The security guard didn't know it was Jalen Tolbert, and I saw him drive by. And I was like, that's Jalen yeah. Tolbert. And uh, so if you ever, you know, I don't know if you ever engage with him, but say, tell him I said, what's up. And uh, I'll tell him, I'll tell him when we get to Oxnard. I, <laughs> yeah. I love Jalen. I think Jalen's a, a great dude. I really do. And I think, I think he's in store for something special. I think, and it may not be one of those like breakout years where he's going to be an all pro or a pro bowler or something of the sort. But I mean, what he's asked to do now is, is different. I mean, he was expected to come in as a third round pick and be the number three receiver last year. That was that was the anticipation. Right. And when he didn't deliver, it 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 really I think it left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths and it made things it made things tough on him as a as a rookie. I mean, he even talked about it at the senior bowl, actually. So thank you for letting him get in so he could talk about this yeah. a little bit. But he talked about it with with Nick Eatman and said, man, you know, like I just never really felt like I had that connection. I never had it click, but now I feel like it has. And you can see the confidence level when he's out there. I mean, he was he was very active in OTAs. He was very active in minicamp. And uh, I think seeing him fully uh, confident in where he needs to be and what he's doing is going to be really the first step that he's had to take. And he has already taken it. To, to be a, a, an impact wide receiver, but he's not asked to be a number three. He's asked to right. be a number four. Maybe even he could challenge for the number three if he's good enough, if he really wants to get after it. And Michael Gallup maybe has a, a down year. I think Jalen Tolbert could be your number three receiver if if he continues to to be on the trajectory that I anticipate him to be on. But it really it starts at training camp, and it's going to have to continue through the preseason because it's going to be a semi Fajoko and Jalen Tolbert heavy preseason in camp because whoever ends up taking that number four wide receiver job might be on the roster and the other one might be on another roster somewhere else. I mean, it's going to be a down to the wire sort of competition between those two guys. And both were, were third and fourth round draft picks. I mean, they're, they're going to be midday, mid, mid round draft picks. Uh, so they're, they're going to challenge each, each other as they, as they go along. So I'm interested to see, who comes out on top in that regard and who's going to be the winner of, of those those uh, position competitions because I, th I think Tolbert's got a really good chance to do so and uh, Simi Fajoko is going to try and take it from him. Yeah, and when, when Tolbert came out, he went to South Alabama. Yeah. And, you know, so you could say, oh, you know, maybe the competition, you know, maybe it took him, you know, he's got to get used to the speed of the game. But one of his best – games came against the university of alabama yeah. so it never seemed to me that top tier talent affected him but you know the pressure you know playing for the cowboys change of scenery but i'm excited and in this offense and historically with dak the fourth wide receiver gets an opportunity to shine you look at cedric wilson you know yeah. cedric wilson goes to miami they're not really using him much there but he was a household name for one or two seasons amongst dallas cowboys fans because he he got his fair share of targets so dak will find you if you're getting open, you're doing your job. Dak will find you. But I do want to mention, so Dak, you know, I guess talking about the Texas Coast offense, talking about not having 10 interceptions. Like, what what do you make of of that, you know, that comment by Dak Prescott and, and kind of mm -hmm. his confidence heading into the season? 
I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier about investing in your investments. And that's what that's what Mike McCarthy wants to do. He wants to invest in the fact that he's got these these weapons. He's got C.D. Lamb and he's got Brandon Cooks and he has these options to get them the football. Tony Pollard being one of them as well. And I think investing into those weapons is getting them the ball in space and making sure that they have room to work. Um and, and room to, to, to succeed. So I think that's where it starts with these guys. I think they've got to, to find a way to, to keep it in Dak's hands for a shorter amount of time and let him get rid of it and continue to throw the football uh, confidently and well. Um, as, as you saw last year, I mean, there were times where he was put in some tough situations and it turned into turnovers. And I think if you're able to keep him out of trouble, all of a sudden he turns into the quarterback of old where he's taking care of the football and, and he's allowing guys like CD and, and cooks to, to really um, show off their strength. So I think that's, that's what the Texas coast is going to be. It's going to be more like the Dak coast. Right. Uh, I think it's going to be more so let's get Dak the, the ball and, and, and allow him to be successful as easily as possible without maybe, uh, challenging our offensive line to hold up a lot more because I think that's where you're getting yourself in trouble. Is if you're expecting the offensive line to hold up longer, that's where they're going to really not have that success. Right. All right. I want to talk about some second year defenders. Sam Williams, Damone Clark. What are your expectations for these two young men heading into this season? There are very few guys on this roster that I'm more excited to see go through a, a fully healthy offseason and go through a first NFL offseason and see that second year jump in Damone Clark. I think he has a chance to be a game changer. I think he has a chance with even with the lack of practice, the lack of involvement because of his injury last year, the lack of strength training, the lack of conditioning, all of this to be said, he came in raw to the NFL and he ended up starting the, the last couple games of the season and really took over a role that's not easy to come in and, and succeed in immediately. And he did. I mean, he came in. Was he the best linebacker in the NFC? No. Was was he uh, a, a go-to uh, game changer, playmaker? Every once in a while, he would maybe flash. But now he has all of that chance to put everything together and have the confidence that he did succeed as a rookie. I, I really do think he could be next level. Whereas – Sam Williams is interesting because he's still in a crowded room. I mean, mm -hmm. whether he likes it or not, I mean, he doesn't have the same possibility that that Damone Clark had just because Damone Clark was was necessary to right. come in and start, and, and he had to go and fill a hole. Whereas Sam Williams is still behind guys like Micah, who's going to probably play full time edge rusher. Then you've got Demarcus, Demarcus Lawrence, who's still yes, he's in his thirties, but he's still playing at a high level. Dorrance Armstrong, he he's going into the second year of his deal. I mean, you've got Chauncey Golston out there too, that's still kind of playing a, a tweener position. I mean, they 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 really like Viliami Fahoko in there as well as right. an edge rusher. Uh, maybe they put him inside too. That would help clear things up for Sam Williams. But he he's got a chance to to come in and and fight for reps, whereas Damone Clark has a chance to come in and take advantage of the reps that he already has had. So. Right. That's where I think maybe if you're if you're asking me who I'm more excited to watch, it's probably going to be Damone Clark, who has the higher ceiling. It's probably still Sam Williams, but we may not see that until midseason or later in the season. Uh, I, I hope he proves me wrong. I really do. I hope Sam Williams comes out and has a phenomenal start to the year and he gets after it the way that they anticipated out of a second round edge rusher because um, he could certainly do that. But I think overall the – right here right now impact maker on that that second year jump it's probably going to be Damone Clark I love it and it's a testament to his work ethic how he was because I remember Steven when we drafted him I, I think he mentioned like five months like we should be able to see him in five months and don't quote me on that because I I might not be exact but I remember him giving kind of a timeline when nobody yeah. expected a timeline and everybody thought it was just optimism and and, yep. and nonsense and this dude, who I don't think I spoke with anybody who thought he'd see the field that year, comes back, works his tail off, and I believe he was clocked having like the highest miles per hour on one play one of any yeah. of the defenders. You know that. So that you know, I I remember hearing when Demarcus Ware. I'm not comparing Demond Clark mm -hmm. to Demarcus Ware. Okay, I'm not. 
what I'm comparing is just the work ethic. And, and I remember hearing like between his first year and his second year, when he showed up at camp, just the, the, the he, he went from a young man to a grown man. And if there's anyone who's going to take that leap, and again, I don't know these players, but just based upon, you know, my analysis from, from what he's doing and what I'm hearing, and I would expect Damone Clark, you know, I'm not saying he was a young man last year, but I, I'd expect him to show up. I'm excited to see him as well because I think he's going to take a leap in, in physical stature, not just his playing ability. And he's got to be hungry because uh, Van Der Esch only signed a one-year deal again. Yep. So that, you know, he could be the guy. He could be wearing the dot. He could be calling the defense. And, you know, he's got some dogs around him that are flying. And, and now he's got somebody in front of him who's going to eat up blocks and allow him to do his job. So my last question for you is about these rookies. Okay. Who? So it's kind of a, a, a two questions. I want to know, like, mm -hmm. which rookie or rookies you're most excited to see at camp, but also kind of which is the rookie or rookies pre-camp you've maybe heard the most buzz about, or you think that coaches are kind of standing up on a table for or just the guys that are really making the most or, or rather made the most of their time during OTAs. Man, that, that's a tough one. Cause uh, there's a lot of excitement around a rookie class in general, right? I mean, yeah, guys always want to see that second year jump, but I mean, the first year is pretty important too. And uh, man, this team was so they were so much benefited last year from those guys that were rookies that did make an impact. Jake Ferguson, Peyton Hendershot, Damone Clark, Tyler Smith. I mean, it felt like almost all of them were impact players. Deron Bland finished up with five oh, interceptions. I mean, he was he was huge. So they if they're expecting that sort of production from their rookie class, I think that's a little unrealistic. Uh, however, I, I think Mozzie, he's definitely had the most buzz. I mean, easy money. He's the first round draft pick. I feel like that's probably a boring answer. But when he puts pads on, I think he's going to command attention. And I'm excited to see him finally put on the pads and allow him to be physical because I was even talking with Mozzie recently and, and he was he was saying, man, I just can't wait to get back to football. I hate sitting around. I hate working out. Like I, I, he doesn't hate working out. That's not what he was saying. He just hates not being able to play the game right. that he loves. He just right. hates not being on the field. He wants to be there and be able to 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 play the game. And so I think I think having him as a as as a, kind of the tone setter for that that rookie class is going to work out really well. Um, I'm trying to think of of maybe somebody else. Honestly, I think Eric Scott. He was the sixth okay. round corner out of Southern Miss that that the Cowboys went up and traded to go get. He may not find his way into the rotation at cornerback just yet, but as far as like special teams goes, maybe deep into the rotation at corner, I think he's going to surprise some people. And he may have some some plays in training camp that say, "Oh, okay, this guy might need a shot or two. And I mean, if we've seen a day three. Uh, corner can from a from a group of five school can somehow make an impact in a rookie season. We saw it last year with Deron Bland. You could possibly see it this year with Eric Scott Jr. I, I I've really liked what I've seen from him early, and if he can continue fighting for that going into training camp, I think all of a sudden you're going to see him maybe in the conversation for the same reps that are being fought for by Kelvin Joseph and Nashawn Wright. If, if those guys don't step their game up, I think Eric Scott's going to be right on their heels. What about Hunter Lupke? You think uh, he, yeah. he might make some noise at training camp? It depends on how they use him. I think right. that's where you're, you're kind of, I think right now I'd put him in the tight end room. I think really where he's going to, okay. Where he's going to kind of hit, hit up initially. I don't think I would put him with the running backs. I think I would put him as kind of an H back up back sort of blocking uh, possibility with, with of course, the ability to go and catch out of the backfield and carry if he needs to. But um, he, he'd be kind of like a hybrid running back tight end, which I guess pretty much is the fullback position, if we're really being honest. But right. uh, they're just not going to call it that. They're going to just say, oh, he's a fullback, but he's going right. to be mostly, I think, in the tight end room whenever he's having those meetings. Um, but, yeah, I, th I mean, I loved his tape. I really did. I thought his tape was fun. If you want to really look at a guy that is under the radar right now that I think could shine significantly, and I've heard this from a couple of people, John Stevens, okay. tight end out of Louisiana, uh, relatively unheard of signing. I mean, nobody really kind of thought about him. Nobody really kind of paid any close attention to him. 
I'm hearing a lot of things of saying, hey, this this John Stevens guy could maybe make some noise. He can maybe get out there. If he has a really good camp, it could turn into a Peyton Hendershot situation where okay. all of a sudden you, you you just have to put him on the roster. You have to at least keep him, keep him around. It could maybe turn into something like that. But keep an eye on John Stevens to see what he can do uh, whenever they get to camp and then get those tight ends after it. Man, well, this has been incredible. A lot of, you know, good good news in here and good analysis. And I'm looking forward to watching your coverage all throughout training camp. So why don't you let all the listeners, listeners yeah. know kind of when you guys are starting coverage, when they'll be able to find it and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so we get started. Our first shows actually air on the 24th. So uh, we'll we'll air it uh, all week long on, on Valley Sports Southwest, DallasCowboys.com, starting with Inside Cowboys Training Camp. Then we'll we'll have training camp live. We'll have talking cowboys, which makes a return on on Wednesday. Uh, makes a return on Thursday. Okay, don't quote me on that. Makes yeah. a return on Thursday. We'll All be right. Thursday. I think we're just one day this week, and then we'll be next week uh, or the Can't second wait. week. It'll be two two times a week. But yeah, we'll we'll have that going on early, and then man, it gets it gets fun from there. But if you if you really want to keep up with it, DallasCowboys.com. The Cowboys Now app, I cannot stress to you how imperative the Cowboys Now app is to download. It's so easy. It's on, on your app store, wherever you end up getting your, your Never app. Never even heard of Cowboys Now. Look at it. Yeah. I need Cowboys to get now. it. Yep. Go get it. Go get it done and, and have it on your on your it looks good on your your homepage too. It's got got the Cowboys yeah. logo on Heck there. Yeah. yeah. Uh that's imperative. You can put it on your your Roku or your smart TV as well. That's super big too. So like Download it anywhere you get your apps, and, and, and it'll work out. And then if you need anything else, follow me right here, at Kyle underscore Yeomans, and we'll get things taken care of. Excellent, man. Appreciate you so much. I look forward to talking to you throughout camp, training camp. Everybody watching at home, we appreciate you. It's been a grind this offseason. Luckily, you know, things have been pretty positive. I'm looking forward to watching the blend of the youth that we brought in. But unlike last year, we brought in a very strong veteran presence. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how – both sides interact with the current core and if we can take a step to the next level i'm feeling really good about this season and it's right around the corner can't beat that so everybody we will catch you all later on take care